OK, good luck, Andy. Here you go. First question. Which TV personality has presented several game shows on TV, including Every Second Counts, Wipeout and Odd One Out? Les Dennis, Paul Daniels or Jim Bowen? OK, um, it's definitely not Jim Bowen. And of the other two, I would say it's Paul Daniels. Paul Daniels yes. presenting those game yeah. shows is the right answer. Yeah, well done, Andy. Well worked out. <laughs> Paul Daniels, and uh, your first question, Chris. In which decade of the 20th century was the TV sitcom The Good Life, starring Richard Bryars and Felicity Kendall, first broadcast? 1960s, 1970s, or 1980s? That was in the 70s, Dermot. Yeah, of course, still being shown now, mm. and uh, it, 1970s, yeah, is the right answer there for The Good Life, easing you both in. Andy, second question. Which actor? appeared in the films Pop Fiction, The Incredible Hulk and Planet of the Apes. Gary Oldman, Rafe Fiennes or Tim Roth? It's definitely not Rafe Fiennes, which is a shame because we're Ralphie's Raiders, that would have been a nice yeah. irony. I think it's Tim Roth. Tim Roth in those films, Pop Fiction, Incredible Hulk, Planet of the Apes. It's absolutely right. Well done, Andy. You have to. And, Chris, what is the first name of the title character played by Michael Kitchen in the TV series Foyle's War? Christopher, Howard or William? He's Christopher Foyle. He most certainly is. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And to all, going well, both of you. Andy, which film director is a co-creator of the TV shows Lost, Fringe and Alias? Is it Brian Singer, Christopher Nolan or J.J. Abrams? This is one I'm not so sure about. Um, I think I think it's J.J. Abrams. Well, I'm not too sure about it, but you went for it quickly and got it right. Yes, well done, J.J. Abrams. That means Chris has to get this. Chris, which sport is featured in the Oscar-winning 1996 documentary film When We Were Kings, boxing, ice hockey or football? When we were kings. So it uh, postulates a f uh, team game rather than boxing. Uh, unlikely to be football. I think it's Canadian. It's about ice hockey. When we were kings, um, <laughs> remaining eggheads. Boxing. boxing. It's about boxing, Chris. Oh. It's about boxing. <laughs> it's about the Ali Foreman fight in Kinshasa. It's the rumble in the jungle, isn't it? And uh, certainly not ice hockey, which means let's concentrate on you, Andy. That was a storming round there, straight through those three questions. And you're in the final round now to continue to show those skills. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, uh, as it stands, Ralphie's Raiders are all there and they've knocked one egghead out. Let's play our second round today. And this one is history. Who'd like to go first on oh, this one? Who's the oldest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might make a Let's crucial go the difference. One. Yeah, you're the oldest, Robert. Yeah, go on, Robert. You're the nearest to history. And all the rest of them admit to being ignorant about history and uh, I'm getting pushed it was one volunteer's forward march and they've all yeah. stepped back. <laughs> you, you were left standing there. OK, Robert, who would you like to play from the Eggheads? Just can't be Chris, but any of the other four? CJ. 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 OK, let's have Robert and CJ then into the question room, please. Well, Robert, let's see if we can get you into the final round, along with uh, Andy there, storming performance from him. Would you like to go first or second? I go first, please, Dermot. OK, Roberts, first question is yours, and this is it. The Picts were an ancient people that inhabited which modern-day area during Roman times? Republic of Ireland, Scotland or France? Well, oh, Dermot, I hope we've picked an easy question to start. Um, I don't think it's Republic of Ireland, I don't think it's France, I think I'll pick Scotland. Yes, uh, important you got that one right. <laughs> it's correct, yes. <laughs> Scotland, OK. Nice easy one to get you started. CJ, Charles I, who ruled from 1625 to 1649, was a member of which royal house? Tudor, Hanover or Stuart? He was a Stuart. Yes, that's correct. So both been eased in. And uh, your second question, Robert. What nationality was Bartholomew Diaz, the navigator and explorer, who led the first European expedition to round the Cape of Good Hope? Spanish, Portuguese or Italian? Hmm. Um, probably Spanish or Portuguese, uh, Bartolomeu Dias. A lot of explorers came from Portugal. I'll, I'll, I'll go down the middle, do a Daphne and go for Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> it 
do a Daphne. Well, having a successful guess is doing a Daphne, and you've done that. That's correct, yes. Portuguese. And CJ, at which battle in 1264 was Henry III defeated by Simon de Montfort, who then had a brief period as ruler of England? Battle of Beckles, Battle of Ringwood, or the Battle of Lewis? Well, Simon de Montfort's most closely associated with the Battle of Lewis. Yes, he is. To all. Good quizzing. And Robert, third question. The Railways Act of 1921 led to the creation of four railway companies known as the Big Four, the Great Western Railway, London, Midland and Scottish Railway, London North Eastern Railway and which other? Southern Railway, South Western Wales Railway or East Anglian Railway? Oh dear Dermot, I'm in the wrong quiz, so could I phone a friend and phone Chris, please? Yeah, well, that would be it, wouldn't um, it? Um, he's, uh, he's chomping at I the I think bits. listening to the question and the areas that are going, I think I'm going to do a Daphne again and go down the middle and go South West and Wales Railway. OK, South West and Wales, and we will ask Chris, is it South West and Wales? No, formed to the London South West and London Brighton South Coast and the South Eastern and Chatham Railways and headquarters at Waterloo, it was the Southern Railway. <laughs> yeah, certainly a fuller answer than I could have given you. Southern Railway is all I know. Southern Railway. Bad luck, Robert. But it gives CJ a chance to win the round. And uh, looking at the question here, let's see how he does with it. Which US president survived an assassination attempt in 1835 when both of the pistols used by his would-be killer, Richard Lawrence, misfired? Was it James Madison, John Tyler or Andrew Jackson? 1835 is too late for Madison. Jackson was the seventh president and Tyler was the tenth. Um, 1835... No, I mean, just on the dates, it's too early for Tyler, so I'll go for Andrew Jackson. And the right answer, yes, Andrew Jackson is correct. Uh, survived that, an assass that assassination attempt because the pistols misfired. Richard Lawrence's pistols misfired. And uh, that means bad luck, Robert. You were going very strongly there until you ran into Chris's favourite subject and couldn't phone a friend and he can't play anymore anyway. And it means, CJ, you'll be in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, just the odd question so far in both these head-to-heads, both been very close, and as you would expect after that, then the honours even. Both teams lost one brain so far from the final round. So our third subject today, let's have a look. It's sport. Who'd like to play this? Sport. And it can only be those who haven't played so far, so it's Michael, Alan or John. Oh. It's me, Alan. Oh. OK, Alan, who would you like to play? From the Airheads, CJ and Chris have played, so you can choose from Daphne, Barry or Pat. Daphne. 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 Daphne, please. OK, let's have Alan from <laughs> Ralphie's Raiders and Daphne from the Eggheads playing sports. Into the question room, please. Now, uh, Alan, do you want to go first or second in this sport round? I'll go first. OK, best of luck, Alan. And your question is this, the first one. What nickname was given to the swimmer Eric Musambani, whose slow time in the 2000 Olympic Games made him an unlikely hero? The emu, the elephant, or the eel? Well, slow time. You obviously would think that it would probably be the elephant, but that's probably too obvious. Um, the emu, you no. Know, somewhere between the eel and the elephant. Uh, I think we'll go for the elephant. Yeah, the elephant. OK, yeah. Swimmer Eric Musambani was known as Eric the eel. Ah. The eel. It was the, uh, it was the swimming, uh, his... Heroic efforts, because he wasn't really very good at it, but he gave it a go, and he gave uh, anyone who wasn't very good at swimming a bit of heart there, didn't he? So, chance for Daphne to take the lead. Daphne, Wayne Bridge and Craig Bellamy represented which Premier League football club during the 2009-10 season? Manchester City, Liverpool or Chelsea? Oh, gosh. You, you know, I hate football questions. Um, Alan knows. Yeah. I don't. Liverpool. <laughs> I'm stunned. No, it's wrong. Well, normally when you say that, you then I was thinking. Do you know when you said I don't know it? I, in my head, it's if Manchester it was a speech City. bubble, my head would have said, "Yeah, right, Daphne. Of course you know it. It's Manchester City." Yeah. <laughs> you really didn't. I knew it wasn't Chelsea. You really didn't know it. 
Well, well, well. <laughs> but you didn't get your first one right, Alan, but uh, it means it stays all square. There's, there's that side of it anyway. Um, Alan, second question. Which New Zealander became Tiger Woods' caddy in 1999 and as a result has often been described as one of his country's richest sportsmen? Is it Lance Ten Brook, Steve Williams or Mike Cowan? Ooh. Golf is not one of my strong points. Um, I think we'll go down the middle. Steve Williams. Down the middle, like Tiger Woods does so successfully so often, it's the right answer as well. Yeah, Steve Williams. Well done there, Alan. You uh, have one on the board then, and uh, let's see if Daphne continues that sure touch she showed. <laughs> Daphne. Thank you. The South African rugby union player, Brian Habana, is most associated with playing in which position, prop, flanker, or wing? I don't know, but I seem to remember they raced him against a cheetah, so I'm hoping he's a wing. Is that right? Yeah, it is right, yes. <laughs> a winger. OK. All square still. And, Alan, in Formula One, what is indicated by the waving of a yellow and red striped flag? A slippery track, a slow-moving vehicle, or a stopped race? It's not stopped race. Um... I think it's a slippery track, don't it? So yellow and red, you're going for slippery track. And you got it right. Well done, Alan. Yes, well worked out. OK, and uh, you need to get this then, Daphne. In which sports did US athlete Sean White win gold at the 2010 Winter Olympics? Snowboarding, alpine skiing or figure skating? I think his nickname is the Red Tomato and it's snowboarding. Snowboarding yeah. and... Uh, yeah, well, you clearly do know it is. I'll confirm it's the right <laughs> answer, yes. Um, stop you hopping up and down there. Why red tomato? Because of... I think it's got bright red hair. OK. Right, well, it's all square then. And, uh, Alan, that means we go to sudden death and take away the choices um, and makes it a lot harder for both of you. Your question, Pete Sampras and which other tennis player were the only Americans to win the men's singles title at the US Open during the 1990s? 1990s. Um... The only one I've got is, is Federer, but I don't think he's American. No, I don't know. Go with Federer. OK, uh, not Roger Federer, you're right. Uh, wrong nationality mm -hmm. and, indeed, uh, wrong decade. And, um, Daphne, would you have known? I Was it Andy Roddick? Oh, no, no, it was Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi, yes. <laughs> Andre Agassi. Came for one and the other. Wouldn't have given you two goals, though. <laughs> um, Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras, the only... Uh, Americans to win and uh, it does mean though it wasn't Daphne's question to be passed over so it doesn't matter that um, Andy Roddick answer uh, this is your question and you win it you win the round if you get it right how many Olympic gold medals did the athlete Daly Thompson win I think it's two 1980 and 84 because I saw him in 88 and he came forth yeah, and the event? Oh, the decathlon. Yeah, it's the right answer, and uh, all the extra information added in there, all I needed to hear was two. That is correct, Daphne. You're in the final round. Bad luck, Alan. I think you would have probably picked Andre Agassi out of a list, but yeah. uh, as I said, before we went into sudden death, it's so much harder. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Here, there is no justice. Please do not hang my man. Good luck, John. Here's your first question, then. What type of bread is sometimes referred to as a French stick? A baguette, a boule or brioche? Well, it's definitely not a boule, because that's uh, the, the French version of bowling. Brioche is bread, but it's a sweet bread, and it's therefore a baguette. Baguette, of course, is the right answer. Well done. Thank you. Pat. What name is commonly given to a vodka martini which is cloudy due to the added ingredient of olive juice? Misty martini, steamy martini or dirty martini? I have no idea. No idea. Well, steamy sounds just irrelevant. <coughs> dirty sounds a bit low market. Misty martini sounds marketable, so we'll go for that. Misty martini. OK. What do you drink, Pat? Do you drink at all? I don't drink very much. Yeah. I drink beer occasionally. Beer? Maybe you ought to try a pint of... Um, Dirty martini. It's the one. OK, well, that's a great start, then. For you, John, you have a lead and can build on it with this. The dish ceviche consists of raw fish, usually marinated 
in what? Lime juice, brine or Tabasco? Hmm, I don't know this one. I wouldn't have thought it was Tabasco. I'm going to guess lime juice. Lime juice for Savish. It's the right answer, John. Well done. OK, well, uh, Pat, staring at defeat, needs to get this. Which religion adheres to a set of dietary rules known as the cash route? Is it Judaism, Islam or Buddhism? Islam, they have halal and haram foods. I'm not sure of the Buddhist terminology, but I think cash route is um, a set of rules followed by members of the Judaic faith, Judaism. Right answer, Pat. Well done. Yes, Neckhead's willing you on there. But because of that slip up on the first one, John, you can take the round and get into the final round if you give me a correct answer here. Good luck with it. Which grape is used to make the Italian wine Barolo? Is it Silvana, Tempranillo or Nebbiolo? Silvana is, I, I'm sure that's a white grape. Tempranillo is a red grape that's grown in Spain and it's Rioja made. So I'm going to go for Nebbiolo. OK, seem to know your grapes. Have you identified it? <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. It's the right answer. <laughs> Which means you're in the final round, John. Prepare for that. Would you both please come back and join your teams? But this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which as always is general knowledge, but I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So Robert and Alan from Ralphie's Raiders and Chris and Pat from the Eggheads, would you leave the studio now, please? So, Michael, Andy and John, you're playing to win Ralphie's Raiders, £13,000. CJ, Daphne and Barry, you're playing for something which money can't buy, and that is the Egghead's reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn, and this time the questions, they were all general knowledge, you are allowed to confer in this round. So, Michael, Andy and John, the question is, are your three brains better than the Egghead's three? And Ralphie's Raiders, how do you want to play it? Do you want to go first or second? We'll go first, yeah, please. we'll go first. Thank you. Final round, first question to Ralphie's Raiders. According to the popular saying, a fool and his money are soon what? United, parted or spent? According to the popular saying, a fool and his money are soon what? Parted. Yeah, I think so. I think we're unanimous on that. It's parted. Fool and his money are soon parted is correct, yes. And one to Ralphie's Raiders. Eggheads. The term gross commonly refers to which number? 121, 144, or 169? 144. Mm -hmm. a, a gross is 12 dozen, which is 144. It is the right answer, 144 for a gross. OK, Ralphie's Raider's second question. What is the meaning of the French expression livraison à domicile? Is it mobile library, right to privacy, or home delivery? Livraison. I'm sure dom domicile is home. Is domicile home? is home. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, livraison. I think livraison I could think, be a library. A, I think it's no, it's not. It's a bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. Bibliothèque is a library. Bibliothèque is a library. Is a library. It's the last one. It's home delivery. I think it's home delivery. We'll go for that. We'll okay, go. I'm happy. Home delivery. The answer is home delivery. Well done. <clears throat> well worked out. Ralphie's Raiders got two on the board then, and uh, Eggheads. 0114 is the dialing code for which British city? Sheffield, Derby or Nottingham? I've no idea. I think it's Sheffield. I think it's Sheffield as well. I don't know what Nottingham is, but I know I recognise the number 0114 and I've done a lot in Sheffield, so my, my strong feeling would be Sheffield. All right. Well, we're not 100% certain, but there's two reasonably strong feelings that it's Sheffield, so we'll go for Sheffield. OK, and you are right. It is correct. 0114 is the dialing code for Sheffield. OK, well, both having to think a bit about your second questions, but both ultimately coming up with the right answer. And so third questions for each team. Ralphie's Raiders, which composer wrote a collection of works known as the London Symphonies during his two stays in the city? Is it Haydn, Bach or Mozart? We have a musical director amongst us. I mean, I think they were actually numbered 100 to 103 or something. I think maybe I'm wrong, but they're definitely by Haydn. Okay, Haydn is the correct answer. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Andy there, having a musical director John there, and uh, gives you the lead, and if it stays that way after I hear the Eggheads answer to this question, you win £13,000. Eggheads, prior to its fame as a centre for porcelain production, the town of Limoges was famous for producing what type of decorative art? Enamel work, rope work, or hard stone carving? I don't have a clue. I really don't know, but let's see if we can work this one out. I just don't associate hard stone carving. I know hard stone carving, it may have something to do with porcelain because there is a degree of carving in for the pictures on porcelain. But my gut feel somehow seems to be enamel work, but I have yeah. nothing to base well, it on. Well, that's the closest closest to glass work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think we should go for enamel. Oh, lordy. I think. Oh, I mean, enamel is sort of glass-based, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a decorative art. Yeah. Well, we're completely struggling now, but the, on the only one of those that really fits the bill as a decorative art is enamel work, so we're going to go for enameling. Enamel work? It's the right answer. <laughs> oh. Hold on, I guess. Got a sudden death, then. Three questions each so far and all square. So, here's your question. What is the length of the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle in which the other two sides are three centimetres and four centimetres long? It's equal to the square root of the two sides. So three threes is nine, four fours is 16, which is 25, and it's that squared, so it's five. Five, yeah. 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 Five centimetres. Five yes. centimetres. So we've got three, four, and you're coming up with the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the square of the other two sides. <laughs> and adding nine and 16, getting 25, square root of which is five, and it's the right answer. Yes, well done. So, eggheads, the national flag of Jamaica features a yellow cross on a background of black and what colour? Isn't it wonderful how many times we see the Jamaican flag thrown at, at athletics meetings? But the answer is green. It's the right answer. Yes, eggheads. On we go. OK, Ralphie's Raiders. In 2009, which comedian ran 43 marathons for charity in just over seven weeks? Yeah, I think we're all agreed it's Eddie Izzard. Yes, it is Eddie Izzard. Yes, that remarkable feat there from uh, Eddie Izzard. 43 marathons in just over seven weeks, more or less... Uh, one a day. And Eggheads, the inland sea surrounds three of the four major islands that make up which country in Asia? And the islands are Honshu, Hokkaido, Shikoku and Kyushu, and the country is Japan. OK, don't over-egg it, <laughs> <laughs> Japan will do. It's the right answer. OK, uh, back to you, Ralphie's Raiders. Who wrote of the condition of Ilomania, meaning a strong attraction to islands? in his 1950s book, Reflections on a Marine Venus. Venus. Could it be someone like uh, the guy, Gavin Maxwell, that wrote Ring of Bright Water? Because he was quite an anatomy to islands. Think it meant, would he? Uh, the other travel person I know is the one that had the, the, the zoo down Gerald. in Jersey, Gerald, Gerald. Gerald Durrell. I could be that. Just well, that's that's a guess. Okay. Guess him. May as well guess. Yeah. We're making a guess on somebody that was involved with that, and it was. We're going to guess Gerald Durrell. Okay, Gerald Durrell. It's not Gerald Durrell, but you couldn't have been closer. It's his brother, Lawrence Durrell. Oh. Good grief. And goodness me, that was. I thought you were going to get it there, John. Yeah. Suddenly, Durrell came into your mind, but it's not Gerald Durrell, it's Lawrence. So, eggheads. Who was the first female Prime Minister of France who held the position for less than a year in the early 1990s? Edith Cresson. Yes. She's the first yeah. one, surely. Yes. We're all agreed? Edith yeah. Cresson. Well, we're all agreed. We think it's Edith Cresson. Edith or Edith Cresson is the right answer, eggheads. You've won. Well... What a struggle they gave you. Absolutely. You dragged yourself over the line by... Mm -hmm. I mean, that Gerald Durrell, Lawrence Durrell, suddenly came to you, didn't it, John? But uh, not to be on the day. Best of luck with the gang show. I know it will continue for many, many, many years. And uh, may your quizzing prowess just uh, grow and grow. Maybe you should have a quiz in the gang show as well. Bring <laughs> the heads along.